Hello everybody and welcome back to our 1.20 Minecraft survival series. So um, basically what I'm showing here is I decided to continue working on this uh, library, I guess. In between episodes, kind of getting it all put together, I went and got another villager and I'm currently working on getting a third before getting them all set up and kind of getting their trades all together and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's what we are starting with. And I also wanted to just quickly mention that obviously, as I just said, we're still on 120. I have not updated the game yet because uh, replay mod has not updated yet. And I wanted to use it for this episode. I also didn't really need the new blocks and stuff for anything in particular for this one, so I wasn't too worried about it. I may update for the next episode depending on what we're doing, I may not, I may just wait until replay mod comes out. Um, we'll have to wait and see. However, I just kind of wanted to throw that all out there before we kind of get into the video. Now other than that, I hope you all enjoy, and let's get into what I've been up to, I guess. Alright, so, as you can see, we've got some new villagers in here. We've got an Unbreaking 3 and a Silk Touch villager. Um, Unbreaking is one that I really wanted, um, so that's really nice. Unfortunately, it's 40 emeralds, but better than nothing. And then, Obviously, I did mention maybe getting Silk Touch if it popped up, and it did, for Efficiency 4. I was getting a lot of, like, Efficiency 2, Protection 1, stuff like that that I didn't want. Um, so I ended up going with Silk Touch, because that was the first thing that popped up that I was like, oh, actually, that's quite useful. Um, so yeah, we're done with that. And honestly, I th think we're done up here for today. I didn't want to do too much up here, just because that was, like, the main focus of last episode. Um, but I do think I do want to work a little more over on this side of the bridge, specifically with our farms here, because right now this looks a little boring. Obviously we have the slant here, which is helping, but it does look a little out of place right now. It's also a little small, especially the carrots. Uh, I kind of want to bring it around a little further, maybe patch up this, I don't know. But stuff like that, which I think we'll do next. Um, and then I also then want to maybe move across the bridge. So I think we'll kind of work our way this way today as we go. And I think the next thing I want to work on is getting a spot for our final original villager over here. Our Fletcher. So, obviously gotta go somewhere and I don't know that I want to put him over there I think I want to keep him maybe actually just here somewhere but I'm not sure exactly what we're gonna do with him yet we'll have to figure that out I'll definitely be thinking about that while we're working on the farm um, maybe we'll clean up the cactus get it out of the way and find somewhere else for it at some point and then if we still have time after that then I would like to do something with our nether portal, because it looks a little out of place right now. A little ugly, even. Um, and I think we can definitely at least do a little bit of decorating over here.
So I decided to put a little build here in the farm. It wasn't for anything in particular, I just thought it would add a little bit of extra detail and height to the farm itself, just to make it look a little bit more interesting. And honestly, after I ended up building it, I was kind of thinking it might actually work to put some farmer villagers in, if we ever want some of those. It's not exactly a very big building, so we may have to build a second one, which we can always put slightly further up the hill towards the library to kind of fill in that gap between the two. But I think that some farmer villagers would work really well in here, and maybe we'll even get to that a little later, or in another video. Okay, so I think for now that is looking a lot better than it was. Got a little sort of building there, we've got some lights and things, so it doesn't get super dark over there or anything, and I've just generally brought the farm out a little bit further. We've got some pumpkins and melons growing over there now. It doesn't connect with the library yet. This little bit of space is kind of empty. Um, I'm sure we'll get to that though at some point, but today is not that day. So, now, as I said, next thing I want to work on is with our villager here. I want to do something with him and this cactus. I think we'll go ahead and clean this up and I'll talk about kind of what I'm thinking. So I kind of want to keep him where he is, sort of. Um, and at first you might kind of go, well, why would you want to leave him here in the middle of nothingness? Because obviously we've got a few buildings over there, we've got a few buildings here, and then we've got some stuff over there. Most of our villagers are also over there. However, my thought is, um, not only is our villager here one that we're going to be trading with quite frequently, because it has sticks and string, string which we can get from our mob spawner down over here, but also, I just think that it'll be a good start to connecting these buildings over to the rest of this area. Because if we have a building right about here, it'll kind of feel like we're like there's a bit more of a connection between those buildings and these ones. And I think, honestly, if we keep the deep slate, not in this configuration, of course, but just kind of do it similarly to how we did on the spawner, or the building for the spawner, I guess, then I think it'll also help it to kind of make a little more sense and fit in a little better, being that it won't be the only one on the water like that anymore. And so I think that that's what I want to do. And I think that right there is a really good spot for that. Um, and then it also means I don't have to try and move the villager too much, because he's already there, and as you probably saw in the time lapse I did, trying to get the villagers up into the library was <laughs> not easy. So I decided for this build I wanted to do a similar base idea as the mob spawner, or the building for the mob spawner, as I already kind of said. And I ended up kind of putting it a little bit further out into the water because I kind of decided that I think I want this building to be a sort of fishing hut of sorts. So I'm going to put a little dock on it and kind of just have some sort of fishy decorations. I thought that this would be a really good spot for it and it just sounded fun, I guess, in the moment. Obviously having a Fletcher in there doesn't exactly make sense, but I don't think I'm going to end up having any fishermen anyway, so I'm not too worried about it. And if I do, I can always pop them in here as well. But for now, I'm not too worried about it. Generally speaking, this was kind of, I had the main building 
on the main deep slate platform there. We have the little dock kind of coming off the side, and then the sort of lower positioned platform there with the basalt and deep slate and mud was kind of like a sort of outdoor deck idea, I guess. Um, I ended up, once the building was in, I ended up putting a little overhang kind of coming out over that and adding a few other little details out there as if it was maybe some sort of area where you could maybe barbecue. And so maybe you could, you know, go to the dock, catch some fish, bring them over to the barbecue and cook them. And of course there was lots of other little details that I wanted to add inside, but we will get to those a little bit later. I have had another idea though, which involves this little staircase down here. So we've got this little space here. I was thinking, um, we didn't use any bamboo in this build. However, we've been using it quite a bit in some of our other builds. And so I thought it would be good to have a farm for it. Now. Bamboo can also be used to make sticks, which we can trade with our Fletcher. So I thought that a bamboo farm just in the basement down here, underneath this build with the Fletcher in it, would make a little bit of sense. And being that we now have access to the nether and have some quartz, we can make an automatic farm. So I think I'd like to do that in the basement, get it looking good, and definitely would like to add some leaves and glow lichen and all that kind of different sorts of stuff to this build in particular, just to get it kind of matching a little bit better with all of the rest of the builds we have going on here. So I've gone ahead and decorated the fishing shack, I guess. We've got a whole bunch of kind of fish around. 
got some little campfires with fish on them. We've also obviously got our Fletcher here. We've got our little bamboo farm down here, which is going to be kind of working away. We've got a little dock out here, and we've even got a cute little boat, which has some fish on it that it's maybe bringing back from out further in the lake. Honestly, I think that this is just a really cute addition um, to the area in general. I think it'll help us connect up what we have over here and what we have over there a little bit better. And I really think that it fits in this spot really well. And yeah. So now that we're done that, like I said, I would like to move over and work on the nether portal because right now it's looking a little ugly. I don't exactly know what I want to do, but I'm thinking maybe we keep it in this sort of deep slate-ish color. Because we are near the water, so maybe we can put some sort of platform or maybe some rocks or something around it. And then we can kind of change the floor out for a little bit of netherrack as if it's almost creeping out of the nether portal. The only thing is I don't actually have any netherrack, so I guess we're going to have to go grab some of that. And maybe we can grab some more basalt and stuff while we're in there to do the rocks with. get to decorating. So, as I said, I definitely want the front of this to be quite a bit of netherrack, as if it's like creeping out, to kind of oh, give us a little bit of something different, I guess. It's not going to be too much. because it's nighttime, go to sleep because it's a thunderstorm, you know, it's indifferent, anyway. Mm, okay, so then we'll shove that in the back and we'll grab out our basalt and our deep slate here. I'm not exactly sure how I want to go about doing rocks. <laughs> I just thought of it and thought it would be cool. what order I do them in, really.
Okay, let's just see how those look first before we go and add too much more. Uh, yeah, actually, I kind of like those. I think that needs one more down, maybe. And then I think maybe we have another one, another smaller one here going up this way. So... Yeah. So I thought that this would kind of be a good time, just because it's been a little bit, to just kind of do a little bit of a build and kind of talk to you all about it and just, you know, take my time on it a little bit more. And just talk through what I'm thinking, just because I feel like I don't do that a lot. Um, let's just leave it there. Um, but yeah, I just I feel like I don't talk through a lot of my builds very often, and I feel like that's maybe something I should be doing, just to kind of get you all more involved in the thought process of what I'm doing, and just so you can kind of see a bit better where I'm going with my ideas. So, generally speaking, my idea here was kind of, I guess, I wanted to do something a little different to the area over by our villagers, because with that we had kind of like a more muddy sort of vibe. And over here, I felt like it might make a little more sense to have something a little more rocky, I guess. Just because, I guess, like, since it's a bit of a smaller, like, sort of island almost, the waves coming in from the water, you know, and the rocks kind of almost keeping the water off the island itself. Um, and I was also quite inspired by some of the rocks I've seen being done in a few other people's content. Um, I've been watching quite a bit of Gemini Tay and her kind of fishing village she's doing right now on Hermitcraft. Um, and yeah, I did end up merging a little bit of the mud into this block palette anyway as well, just because it works, um, not too much. And then I also ended up adding some stone and I think honestly we could use a little bit of mossy cobble as well, just so it merges a bit better into the grass and the moss that's gonna kind of be there. So, I'll have to do that at some point as well. So, again, like I said, I will definitely go in and add some mossy cobble and do all that stuff. But I think that that is for another time. So, thank you all for watching. If you did enjoy, please do leave a like and hit that subscribe button. It greatly helps me out and I really appreciate it. And, again, I hope you all enjoyed. See you on the next one.